3, verses 13 to 17. It's the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come, did you, do you come to me? Jesus replied, uh, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. Um, so this is, I'm going to preface, this is a difficult sermon. Uh, I told the pastor I was going to preach on the Trinity, and he goes, oh, I've never preached on that. That's too hard. So, so our pastor is a very, very smart man. I guess smarter than me in the fact that I'm doing this. But yeah, so the title of it is Relational God. And I, and I use this passage so you can see, yeah, there is the Son, and he's being baptized. And there is the Father in heaven, and he's saying, this is my Son, whom I'm well pleased. And then there's the Holy Spirit descending as a dove. So amen, this is, this is God, this is Trinity. This is still, this is absolutely who the Lord is. And I had to, I didn't have to. I gave an explanation of the Trinity one time uh, when I was, in, I was in college to be a, a pastor in Nyack School. And this is my explanation of how I explain the Trinity. Now, this is how I understand it. It's known to be a very difficult thing to fully grasp. And that's totally underst understandable. It is, it is God. It is three in one. Jesus is not the Father. The Father is not Jesus. The Holy Spirit is also not the Father, nor is the Holy Spirit the Son. But yet, it is, it is who God is. This is who God is. Some people, they think that, oh, you know, um, I forget the name. I think it's Unitarian view, where Jesus is the Father. So, in other words... Jesus is being baptized, and then he looks up, and then from heaven, it's also Jesus saying, oh, this is my son who I'm well pleased in. Uh, that kind of, that doesn't really, that doesn't line up with, with, with uh, logic. That doesn't make much sense. There's other times where it's like the, the Holy Spirit is just like a force. It's just like, might as well be like Star Wars. It's just like, an, uh, uh, just a force, like nothing personal. That also doesn't make sense. That's, that's not who God is. A God that says in the Bible that you could grieve the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has consciousness. It has a personality. So yeah, there is a Father. There is a Son. There is a Holy Spirit. It is three in one. Mind you, I, I'd say that Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that it is, it is, this is truly who God is. There is no sin in God, and God is all eternal. And a part of what I'm trying to say is that the fact that there is no sin creates this sense of oneness that no one could fully, truly grasp. Because sin means, it's like an ancient archery term to miss the mark. So in God, there is never any sin whatsoever. So there is a oneness with Father, Son, Holy Spirit that we've never experienced because we have sinned. We sin in different ways. There is a oneness in Father, Son, Holy Spirit that we cannot have, even if we have a twin, even if we have a really, really close friend, or we got a clo you know, we're really close, there's still secrets. There's still maybe a lie here and there. Maybe at one point there was jealousy, there was envy. There is no sin whatsoever between Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So there is nothing in our lives that we could compare it to. God is utterly holy and unique. Amen? And God truly knows what it's like to be in relation. God, you say God is love. God is love. Like, yeah, amen. God is love. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is the, there's a perfect unity. There's a perfect relationship. Because even that's what sin is. Sin is a distance in a relationship. When you sin, you sin against God. What is that? You sin it against God means you're separating from God. You're separating from listening to Him. You're separating from obedience. You're separating and trusting Him. You're separating in your faith. That's what sin is. Sin is relational distance. There is no relational distance between Father, Son, Holy Spirit. 
But what makes this sort of like should blow your mind, just thinking back on Jesus and his death on the cross. This is like I was trying to explain this and this is the one part that really was able to someone was able to grasp this. When Jesus dies on the cross, he says, hey, I, was, I don't know if I'm going to cry. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus is on the cross. It says it in Matthew uh, chapter 27, verse 46. Jesus is on the cross and he literally takes upon the sin of mankind all on him, what we rightfully deserve. And there is Jesus on the cross and understanding, feeling what it's like to have sinned. He feels that. He looks up into heaven and he's like, I've, I've, I've been separated from the Father in heaven. And then when he dies, remember when he dies, they poke at his heart and there's water and blood. He dies of a broken heart. It is the only time ever in existence. God is before time. It says Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. It's before time, before space and time existed. This is the only specific time period where Jesus actually experiences sin, that relational distance. That is like, to me, that is this one of the things that's just like, wow, that's mind-blowing. Just had to give that as a point of that's the gravity of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. To look up to heaven and to see and to feel that relational distance that he's that has never been an experience prior to that. There is like this sense of, of oneness with God, though, right? There's a sense of oneness that is without frame of reference in our lives. There is no hidden agenda with God. There is no pride. There is no failure of responsibility. There is, there's, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they, they, do, they could do different things, but there's no separation no pride. Like I said, no sense of hierarchy. I'll read John chapter 16, verse 7 to 10, and then 12 to 15. Uh, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. There is, uh, no, uh, there is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but will tell you of what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring he will bring me uh, glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Remember, like I said, there's no favoritism. There's no hierarchy in, uh, in, in God. So there's Jesus saying, listen, the Spirit will come. It is better. Jesus is saying, it is better that I leave. So then the advocate could come. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come. And it's better that the Holy Spirit comes. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, what is the Holy Spirit going to say? He's going to convict the world of its sin. Of, it's going to say of, uh, of what, it, what it is to, to live a righteous life. The fact that they have to believe in me. Believe in me saying Jesus. Have to believe in me to, to, to know who God is. And everything that belongs to me belongs to the Father. And the Holy Spirit will convict people of doing this. And yet, at the same time, when Jesus is here on earth, he's like, I'll, I obey the Father. I don't even do what I want to do. I obey the Father. And the Holy Spirit, and he's saying about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't just do whatever he wants to do. He's going to convict the world of, uh, he's going to convict the world of Jesus. He's going to glorify the Lord Jesus. It is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's, there's no sense of like, I'm better than this person. I'm, it's like, there's no sense of that. It's absolutely pure purity and relational love is God. Amen. 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 I'm sorry. I, I get I get lost in this myself. It is it is a, a beautiful thing to, to think of. It was a beautiful thing to know. So all that belongs to the Father also belongs to the Son. And the Holy Spirit brings glory to Jesus. 
And Jesus says that it is better that the Spirit comes. And the Holy Spirit, like I said, is not a force. It has consciousness. It has personhood. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. You don't bring sorrow to a force. You don't bring sorrow to, to a power. You bring sorrow to someone that has intellect, someone that has personhood. So the Holy Spirit is a person. The Father in heaven, yes, person. Jesus of, of, is a person. And this makes up who God is. Trinity, three in one. But there is no sense, like I said, no frame of reference that we have. Because there's nothing that we have that is as pure as that oneness. There's no secrets. There's no, like I said, no hidden agenda between Father, Son, Holy Spirit. As it says, like, uh, God, is, uh, God is all humble, without pride, without selfish ambition, truly loving through service and through speech. As it says in Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 2 to 11. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared, when, uh, he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to a place of highest honor, giving him the name above all names. Uh, that, that, is, that is the name of Jesus that every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Jesus gives us this perfect example of how to live while also legitimately being God. Jesus says that he is God. Jesus says, before Abraham, I am. So Abraham, Jesus was born. Right? He was born you know, in a manger. But Abraham existed before Jesus was born. But he's trying to say, I existed. I exist before Abraham existed. Abraham is like the father of their faith. He's like, before Abraham, I am. And it says I am means the great I am. Means that he takes upon the holies of holies of names. To the point the Pharisees, they rip the, 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 their cloaks. Heresy. You're saying that you're God. They knew what he, Jesus was saying. Jesus is saying that you, you're saying that you are God, that you existed. You didn't just reincarnate. Some, there's some people, some uh, occults that believe Jesus is a reincarnation. Mel Melchizedek was like, no, it's not saying that he was born prior. He's saying that he is God, that he is God before even Abraham. That's what Jesus is saying. And at the same time, what is Jesus saying here too? He doesn't take upon the divine privilege. He was truly human. While here on earth, he was truly human. Without sin, without fault, but truly human. Jesus gives us this perfect example of how to live. He obeyed the Father while being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Jesus obeyed the Father while being empowered by the Holy Spirit to be that perfect example of how we should live. At the same time, with his death on the cross, that's, that's, that's like mind-blowing. Imagine, he literally takes upon that sin. He actually feels what it's like, that separation. And then he dies of a broken heart because he takes the place, our rightful place. We belong on that cross. Each and every single one of us belong on that cross. But he takes that place, never knowing what it's like to have sinned himself. So just think, I know it's, it's hard to think, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but there is... Like I said, there's no pride. There's no ego. Ego. There's like, the, okay, Jesus goes like, hey, I obey the Father. Whatever the Father says, I do. The Father says, 
This is my son. Listen to him. I'm well pleased in him. Everything that's mine belongs to him. And then Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. Oh, someone even better than me is coming. The Holy Spirit is coming. And the Holy Spirit goes like, you know what? Bring glory to Jesus. Bring glory to the Father in heaven. And he says, and then Jesus is that perfect example of how we should live. And then look right here in, in John chapter 17, verses 9 to 12. See, God desires uh, us to be obedient to the plan of the Father, bringing praise to Jesus while listening to the Holy Spirit living in us. The Lord desires for us to be in fellowship together just as the Father is in fellowship with the Son, just as the Trinity. That's what Jesus prays for. Jesus prays for this, that this is the best way to evangelize to the rest of the world. It says in John chapter, seven, uh, John chapter 17, verses uh, 9 to 12. See? Um, yeah. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me. He's talking, this is Jesus uh, uh, praying to the Father in heaven. Because they belong to you. All who, all who are mine belong to you. And you have given them, given them to me. So they, belong, they, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. The Lord asked so that we may be united in fellowship together just as we are. This is Jesus literally praying to the Father, asking for that unity, that that fellowship, if we have that fellowship, the world will know who Jesus is. The world will know that everything belongs to the Lord Jesus. The oneness of the three Godhead is hard to wrap our minds around. But that, that we could say, you know, whether you pray to the Father or you worship Jesus or, or I just listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's, it's God. There's, there's no envy. There's no like, oh, why do you pray to the Father so much? You should pray to Jesus. Or why are you just listening to the Holy Spirit? You should, you know, just uh, follow whatever, follow the plans of the Father. No, it's, it's not. There's no sense of envy. There's no sense of, of, of hierarchy. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one. And it's hard to, like I said, it's hard to wrap our mind around it. There is zero sin in that, in that relationship. So, to be honest, it is best that we think of the Trinity as one. Because it's not like, if, you, if you're praying to the Father that it's a secret that the Son doesn't know. Or if it's something that the Holy Spirit is inclining your heart to do, that the Father in Heaven isn't also in agreement with. Or that doesn't in line with the Word of God, of what the, of what the, Bible, of what the Bible says who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit is going to ask, as I've, I've seen, I've heard of like... Um, uh, critics of, of Christianity and stuff like, oh, you just listen to the Holy Spirit, whatever it tells you. What if it tells you to go like rob a bank? It's like, why would the why would the Holy Spirit tell anyone to rob a bank? You know, the Holy Spirit would obviously glorify the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus is written within the Holy Scripture. Amen. There is there is that's why it's like, oh, it's it's hard. It's hard. it's okay that it's hard. Understand this about God. You could say God is love. Because God is perfect in relationship. God is perfect in relationship. And what does God desire the most? God desires that you are close to him. He desires that you draw near to him in relationship to him. Amen? Amen. We can conclude. Let's see. We can conclude that our triune God is love because God is all eternal, perfect in relationship perfect within Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then we could also conclude the fact that like, even more, adding more to the gravity of what Jesus did on the cross to actually feel for he felt forsaken. He was like, why have you left me? He felt what it's like to have sinned. He felt what it's like to have that on him. And not just one sin, but all of sin. All of it. He felt it. And he did that for us. We should thank the Lord Jesus for what he's done. Whether it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's God. It is God. We should love the Lord 
knowing that He wants to be close to us. Let us always draw closer to the Lord. If you have any more, if you have any questions after this, please talk to me. We'll talk. We try to learn together in fellowship. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for dying on a cross for all of our sins. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for living within all believers of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you uh, for, for the plan of salvation. I thank you, Lord, uh, for you. You will come again one of these days, and um, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that you, Jesus Christ, that you are Lord. We thank you, uh, Holy Spirit, that, uh, that we know that uh, to be true by, by your power, that we may glorify the Lord Jesus in his name, that we may know that the, the Father in heaven does have a plan for our hearts and for our lives, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we may be in fellowship together, uh, Lord Jesus, as you say in your prayer, Lord Jesus, that uh, you are in, in, in right fellowship, that you are one with the Father, Lord Jesus, and the way we should be one together in fellowship. Uh, um, with uh, fellow believers here today, Lord, and, and that we should be just different parts of the same body, different parts of the same body of Christ, uh, Jesus being the head of that body, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we pray, Lord, that we're able to get deeper into the depths of who you are, Lord Jesus, understanding that uh, we are limited by, by just who we are. We're limited by the fact that we have uh, sin and uh, they're limited by the fact that we are finite, Lord. But let us grow more and more in the knowledge and, um, and, and in your love, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you truly know what it's like to be in perfect relation, Lord. That we can have this relationship with you, Lord, and you desire us to be in that perfect relationship with you, Lord. We thank you once again, Lord Jesus, that, um, that, that the veil is torn, Lord. That we could go to the holies of holies, Lord. We go to the holies of holies, Lord Jesus, because of your sacrifice on the cross, for our sins, Lord, at any time, at any moment of the day, we could come to you in prayer, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.